Let's take a look at the text chain here. Uh, 10.43 a.m. on a Monday. Glenn Howerton. We should start a bit earlier if we can. Uh, We usually take at least 75 minutes with commercials. Can we start at 8.45? Charlie Day. Yeah, I can get there then. Rob McElhenney. 8.45 works! Exclamation point. Well, it's 8.45. Uh, Rob? Glenn? Megan? There's nobody here. There's nobody left at the podcast. This this is it. It's it's fizzled down to nothing. Well, now Rob, how do you feel about the fact that Glenn was the one who said, "Well, let's start at 8:45." <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. And uh Megan, you're you said you weren't going to be here. That's fair. Well, um the gang wrestles for the troop. What a show, guys. You know, what a show. Like, how does how, how does Mark Marin do it, I wonder? You know, he just goes on and on and on by himself. Oh, wait a second. We have an arriver. We have a we have someone in the house. And he's not even gonna get the most razzed. Are you rolling solo now? Oh yeah, buddy. Right now, just rolling solo? Yeah, I could sing a funny little song, but I'm I'm not in the mood. My spirit is crushed. You know, people are trying to get to work. They're trying to be entertained. You know, they're up with their morning coffee. They need more. They need more. We got to give them stuff, you know? Yeah, this is, this is not something you want to do alone, right? Well, now, you demanded we be here by this time. And I will say you were one minute late, which yeah. is fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> I thought I was going to be, I thought it was going to be worse than that. And it was a uh, total oversight. Yeah. Where is this man? I, well, that's a very good question. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm a little concerned uh, because he's not one to be... Late, generally oh, speaking. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I heard thought... a voice I know. That's crazy. I've been sitting out for 15 minutes reading my email because Glenn said he was going to be late. No, no. <laughs> I swear to God. No. 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 Yes. Unacceptable. I've been here since 8.15. Oh, uh, well, Man, you, you haven't. Really you screwed haven't. up. You really screwed you up. Haven't, you haven't. I haven't been here yeah. since 8.15. You've been in an alleyway when somewhere I, when I get When I get a text that says, hey, guys, I'm going to be late. I just go, okay, well, then he's going to be late. So let's yeah. Just, yeah, but I didn't say was, how late. He didn't say how late. And it was very on you. I would have figured you would have been early to give him a little rib. To razz me. To I thought you were, I was, because it was I'm, his idea. I was like, you know what? I sat get, here like a dick with my dick in my hands. I got this text hand? and thought. Nah, but it could have been. That could potentially be fun, but I'm sure the audience has got to be sick of hearing yeah. how one or two of us is late for the show <laughs> that they want to watch all or the time. To. Maybe you think we'll cut that? What's, uh, she's not here. Uh, uh, what's on that piece of paper there that's in front of you? Well, these are like questions if someone wanted oh, to do some Oh, that's hosting. where I usually sit. She, yeah, she guys, gave me the host questions, guys, but that's going to be you today, Rob, I guess. The gang wrestles for the troops. Holy moly. Did you watch it? Did you see it? Did, did. you enjoy it? I watched it. Oh my uh, God, I, I watched it, very it much. too. I enjoyed it very, very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good There's one. a level of silliness to that one. Yeah. That's just pure joy. I kind of feel like we blew it. I feel like we should have bumped it up so that it was uh, airing on, so that we were dropping it on Memorial Day. But instead, we're recording the episode about wrestling for the troops. The day after. The day after Memorial Day. We celebrated the troops. But, I mean, you know, I guess that's a thing. But dropping it on Memorial Day would have been sweet. Well, well, People listening to podcasts while they're at their barbecues. They would have been like, hold the fucking party. They just dropped... Oh, hang on a second, guys. A military-themed podcast yeah. on a military-themed holiday. Yeah, DJ was like, <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I'm so sorry. those jean shorts off. <laughs> it's getting wild. How many people do you think were wearing jean shorts yesterday? A lot. Oh, a lot. Uh, a lot. lot. Yeah, a lot of jean shorts around uh, the pool yesterday. The weather wasn't great here in Los Angeles, though, for Memorial Day. I flew in. I was in New York City. I was in New York City. I'm fine. What were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know. What were you doing there? 
Uh, we had a little get together from my old man, um, who is now 80 years old. Wow. Yeah. 80. So, 80. Uh, yeah, he actually turned 80 in uh, January, but we were like, well, I'll get together in the spring. Yeah, January. I don't want to have to go out there in January. Yeah, it was, it was good. Yeah. It was lovely. You know, family, friends. Did you do anything else? See a show while you were out there? No, in and out, pal. In and out. Okay, so you didn't, you didn't. <laughs> Watch anything? On I'm trying Broadway to think if I have a really interesting antidote, but I don't. No, we watched um, antidote. Yeah. If you had a really interesting antidote, anecdote, I would definitely be anecdote. want to hear about that. The, this the added C. It's a sneaky C. It's a sneaky sneaky anecdote. Anecdote. It's no, stupid. It's- that's not what I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if you'd come back from New York with an with antidote, antidote, that'd be, that'd be <laughs> amazing. a really good antidote for, yeah. for your dyslexia. curing your New York ales. What ails you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, season five, episode seven, Gang Wrestles for the Troop, aired October 29th, 2009, fellas. Uh, it was written by Scott Martyr and Rob Roselle and directed by Randall Einhorn. Randall Einhorn all over this season. Special guest stars, Travis Schultz. This is as Ben the Soldier. This mm-hmm. is Travis's first episode with us, yes? First appearance of Roddy Piper as the Maniac. Yes. Yes. That's right. He's Amazing. been on twice because he was selling in bigger on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Don Fry as a wrestling opponent. Huh? Okay. Now I'm glad that that was oh, put. Wait. I'm glad that that was put. That's in. Oh, Don Fry. Wrestling. So right. I ha- I watched the episode yesterday, and it jumped out at me as Don soon as the Fry. the episode began that Don Fry is a he, Don Fry is a pioneer of ult, of the UFC. He is one of the original. Like when Hoist Gracie was when yeah. he he was around that era. Yeah. Well, so like the early, early years, yeah. Really early. Pioneer in terms of he was fighting or he was like, let's build a business called the UFC? He was fighting. Oh, listen, listen, if he had started that fucking business, he wouldn't have been wrestling for us on It's Always Safe Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. well, He'd be sitting in his mansion somewhere. People love what they do. Well, uh, yeah. uh, we, none of us were UFC fans at the time. Of- no, that was, no, I remember. Do you guys remember? That was when UFC was like, uh, uh, this is my memory of it at least, and you guys tell me if you remember this too. It was advertised on TV. It was like VHS tapes you could yeah, buy I remember through the mail. In college, watching a VHS of Hoist Gracie, and it was brutal. It was like people getting their arms broken. Yeah. Like it was, it was like it was, it was basically like cage, like blood. I sport remember just style. some dude with a long beard who was kind of like heavy set. Who was like tank, the tank, tank. yeah, 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 no, tank, yeah, tank. tank, Abbott, Tank Abbott, oh, yeah. yeah, David Tank Abbott, yeah, all right, from Huntington Beach. Mm-hmm. I remember him. <laughs> okay. Gee, would I you have the playing horse. cards? What's happening right now? <laughs> I watched the I watched I got the, all the cards well, okay, plastic. So, uh, so, I'll trade you a Tank Abbott for a Hoist Gracie. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, none of us were into the UFC at that time or when we shot this episode in 2009. But by no. 2009, the UFC was 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 doing pretty Taking well. Taking off, yeah. Uh, but we didn't realize that, that, um, that Don Fry was – this pioneer of the UFC. And so mm-hmm. I've subsequently, I've become a big fan. I've gone back and watched all of those early UFC events. All of them. I've seen ev- every one, the first 20. Where does this man find the time? What, what, if, I, if I'm working out or something like that, it's a good thing to pop on. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. You've got UFC in the background while you're working out and you're actually paying attention. You're like, that's that's Don Fry. I've been doing a set. <laughs> I get that, I get that. Yeah, yeah, it's you don't have to watch like, you know, you can, it's not like a- yeah. A uh, film with subtitles, you can look away from the screen. That's so. a beautiful mind shit, man, where you can do two things at the same time. Like You, you need can't to be concentr- have, like, sports on the TV. He needs and- to be concentrating on his form, or he's going to hurt himself. <laughs> he's in his 40s. I find no, no, it no. motivating to watch that sure. kind of blood sport. Sure. <clears throat> okay, I'm sorry. I interrupted. Please <laughs> you, continue. Were you annoyed by the fact that I've found it inspiring? I'm worried about you. I'm worried about your form. I'm worried about your form. On, while you're working out, you got to mm-hmm. you you let that I, I can check in and check out. That's right. Form? I mean, between sets. <laughs> no, between <laughs> sets. Between sets, you're watching between sets, stuff. Yeah. You're just looking up and you're saying, oh, you've seen some sweaty men, then you're turning yourself into a sweaty man, <laughs> and you're seeing another sweaty man. And <laughs> you're not going to be sweaty like and him. And you're like, how can I get sweatier? And then you're <laughs> watching another man, and you're saying, well, if there was another man in here for me to press against, that would be exciting. <laughs> and then, on and on and on. Well, if there was a man I, I wouldn't want to press against, it would be Don Fry. Yeah, you Don wouldn't, Fry you was, was, uh, was, was famous he? for, he was a wrestler. And was, like a collegiate American? Yes. Collegiate and he was a wrestling okay. coach at, I believe, Arizona State. Mm-hmm. And he was also a firefighter. And this was at a time where you were semi-professional. You were a fighter, but you were also, like, you had a job. Oh, you had to. Mm-hmm. But he he was one of those guys that came in 
early and was able to compete. And I believe he beat Hoist Gracie if he didn't. Wow. It was around that Are you era. serious? Yeah. Mark Coleman, I believe. There's a fight between Don Fry and Mark Coleman that's one of the most brutal things that's ever been caught on, on videotape. What, what brutal? What, what happens? They savagely beat the living shit out of each other. For well, that still many. happens. Yes. What, what, I, what, I, what I never saw and never wanted to see was, am I, am I crazy in thinking that in the really, really early days of UFC, they had a lot less rules? A lot fewer rules. If Meg was here, she'd, she'd point that out. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. Jesus. There was a lot less rules. Okay, fine. A lot, a lot fewer a rules. A lot fewer rules, yes. You could, and there, you could, you could, could there break. Was, there was could, groin yeah, punches. Right. You couldn't, put, there was no ga eye gouging. No eye gouging. Uh, but that was kind of it. I mean, you could snap people's limbs you if spit, you wanted to, right? You, you can somebody? still do that if people don't tap out. Yeah. yeah, they'll break your people's arms, get broken, and things like that. I know, but that they, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's it's pretty savage. Yeah, but there's things like you could, could you, like back in the day. I mean, can you just straight up kick somebody in the knee and just buckle their you knee can still backwards? Do that. You can do that now. <laughs> yeah, just break somebody's yeah, knee. They have, yeah, they have rules against elbows. Your elbows can only come at a certain angle across someone's face, which seems very specific. Yeah. It's worth it's Well, worth they don't want you they don't want you uppercutting. They don't want you getting that, you know, the bone into the into the brain thing. Is that just a is that a real thing? Is that a real way to kill somebody? To, to oh, make the, their nose bone go into their brain, or is that just one of those things I think things that was one of those urban it, legends. Because <laughs> you legend. don't really hear about that happening. I've too never long. heard of that. You, th actually you think happened. that that would happen in boxing from time to time? Yeah, you think. Yeah, you'd be like people just like trip and hit their nose on a table and like oh went up in your brain and you died. Yeah, it's worth hear. having uh, Meg uh, when she comes back to work um, mm -hmm. put up some of that. UFC footage from an early fight. There was a, there was one in particular I'm thinking of with this guy named uh, Joe San, and Joe San was on the ground, and there was a guy that he was fighting who was just pounding on his dick, just, just pounding <laughs> on. It. I mean, just pounding on it until eventually he tapped <laughs> from <laughs> groin strikes. I yeah, believe. yeah. <laughs> That, that was legal. That would be an amazing thing too, if like if that was like your signature move. You know what I mean? Like just just yeah. like pounding dick. Yeah, yeah, it's pounding dicks. <laughs> you know, in the ring, in the octagon. Was it an octagon back then? I think that came in later. It was okay, definitely so it was a, a hexagon, or <laughs> maybe could have been it square. Was a could it? It could have been a square. Oh, if it was a square, that's just you know that's a mess. Um, I, so so Don Fry. Don Fry. And I, mm -hmm. I, I was very struck by it because at the time he was just a guy that Roddy was wrestling, who was cl clearly an athlete. Uh, I, I think Roddy it. brought him in. He did. Yes, he did. Because he was like, I, I'm going to have to do a routine with somebody. Let me call a buddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Make it look now, good. did Don Fry also wrestle in the WWF? Maybe. Maybe Probably, he made it. Right? Maybe. maybe. Hmm. Okay. All right. His well, nickname was The Predator. Yeah. He looked, he, he had like a predator look. Yeah, I don't remember. Big mustache. Yeah, he had a big mustache. Yeah, had a big mustache. Right? yeah okay, yeah, That's I remember it. him now. I remember him now. Okay, well, should we talk about the episode? I would, I'd love to. This episode I'd love is to. so funny. So funny. Roddy Piper, man. I mean, we could just talk about him. If there are people under the age of 35 watching or listening to this, they can't really fully understand the cultural impact that Roddy Piper had. Yeah, so for us, like wrestling <sighs> yeah. was what TikTok is now. You know, or YouTube. It was like... It was our stories. It was our soap opera. Yeah. Little bits of information. It's not a full narrative. <laughs> <laughs> it, was at, it was at its zenith. Yeah. You could argue, right? In the, in the 19, late 80s? Yeah, the late 1980s. I don't know, dude. I don't it's know. It's pretty big now. It's, it's, it's yeah. always been big for... Yeah. It's Maybe we big. were at our zenith. We, yeah, yeah. We I think it was at the, the zenith for we us. Yeah, when you hit 12 years old. I don't know. I mean, Hulk, Hulk, Hulk Hogan, Hogan. Andre the Giant. Coco Roddy. Beware. <laughs> <laughs> Tito Santana, Roddy yeah. Roddy Piper, yeah. the Iron Sheik, the Iron Sheik, the Iron yeah. Sheik. Uh, oh man, for Christ's sakes, George mm -hmm. the Animal Steel, Randy Randy the Hitman Savage, or no Randy, no Randy Macho Savage. Man, Randy Macho, Macho man, man, yeah, you know what it was? No, was, thinking, Ran it, it was the Hitman mm, Heart, like Brett the Hitman, Brett the Hitman Heart, right? The Heart Machine, and steroids were like <laughs> just you know finding their sweet spot of like, we can really juice a guy up. Yeah. Look what we do to this macho man. Yeah, we'll turn him into a... Yeah. <laughs> you want to see how macho we can make this guy? <laughs> He's more macho than First man. First of all, look at his sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a windshield. Yeah. But the characters that those guys created, I mean, yeah. you go back and still you Fantastic. watch it. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Macho man. It's Randy theater. Savage is barely... I mean, he is a true savage. He's barely a, a person. It's great. It's <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you're li living on Slim Jims and steroids. <laughs> uh, to what extent is it fake 
Is it real? They keep it so- I think they take umbrage with the word fake because it is, and we kind of addressed this in the episode, it's not fake insofar as they are putting their bodies through that. Oh, yeah. It's just yeah. that it's choreographed. It's choreographed. To a certain extent. To an extent, right? Because you can kind of wing they it. They have signals, though, you know, when they do like the, the you know, they're like indicating to each other, yeah. like, you know, or like, like slapping stuff and they're like, okay, now he's going to do the thing. Like, yeah, there's little codes, right? That they throw y- out. Yes. I, I always thought when you hear that it's, that it's choreographed, you, you have this idea in mind that it's very, it, it's very rehearsed. And before, before the show, they've gone through all of the moves and it kind of isn't that they figure out who's going to win. And then they have a couple of moves that they know they're going to do. But and then apparently Andre, is- the giant, would just do whatever he wanted, and everybody had to just go along with it. And Ro- and Roddy says in his book, I read the, his book. Um, oh yeah, in the pit with Piper. Us, in the pit with Piper. Uh, I read he, that book. He talks too. about yeah, it's amazing. He talks it's all about over the place. <laughs> Andre. He talks about Andre was so. It didn't matter who was wrestling Andre, including Hulk Hogan and Big John Studd and like massive men. If Andre wanted to pick, to pick you up and throw you into Neptune, he could. Really? Yes. Now, towards the end of his yeah, life and say, career, he, looked, he was he falling looked, apart. Yeah, he looked big, but not necessarily strong. He was so strong. strong. They he were was. saying, like, the difference between muscle and just, like, straight-up mass. If somebody weighs five, 500 pounds, it doesn't matter. If you, if you weigh 300 pounds, if you are Shaquille O'Neal, but if somebody weighs 200 pounds more than you— Yeah, you're picking up Shaquille you're O'Neal. You're picking up Shaquille O'Neal, and you're throwing him. Yeah. That's wild. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, imagine being able to toss somebody as big as Hulk Hogan or— Randy Macho Man Savage. Well, you think I mean, of yourself as a grown man, and you're like, well, there's no other grown man. There's a, <laughs> there's a grown man. There's joke. very few grown men that you think could actually pick you up like a, like a child and just throw you, right? <laughs> but yeah. Sha- Shaq could do that. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. the sure. relative- me. Yeah, if you think about your child, like no matter what, if your child came at you with like punches, you'd eventually just grab one and, th- and throw him across the street. Right, right. You could do that if you wanted to. I wouldn't do Shaq- that to my child, but I would do it to another child. <laughs> yeah, if, yeah, if another yeah, yeah. child came at me, I sure. would do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I would toss it. But uh, if you yeah, outweigh she, something yeah, by Andre 150 pounds. Yeah, yeah. You yes. could, yeah, yeah, you can, right. It's How tall was he? Do we know? They, they list him at seven, they, they, almost eight feet tall, which he was not. I think he was like seven five, seven four, seven five. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there's NBA players taller than him, but not bigger than him. Yeah, but it's the tall. It's the tall with the big. It's, it's the, the tall with the big. With the, the yeah, mass. those photos of him drinking a beer. Uh, yeah, like and the it way looks he holds like a, a little beer, looks, sippy cup. Yeah, like a sippy cup Ugh. in his hand. He oh. could drink a case of beer at a city. How tall was the world, world's tallest man? Was like eight eleven or something? Yeah, it's crazy. Right? It's weird. I was, it was just like looking in the at his 40s name or Robert uh, Waldslow or something like, like the, that. Yeah. Waldslow, and he was yeah, he was. Eight, eight feet tall. Yeah, oh, I know he was boy. taller than eight feet. He was he was like he was like eight. We need eight six. We need we need our 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 fact checker because I was actually just looking this up the other day too because I don't know Miles was talking about it. He Russell was, asked me last night who the tallest man yeah. ever was. Yeah, and it was like Robert. Well, let's look at him. Robert. Wa- Robert Wadlow. Wadlow. And how tall was Wadlow. he? I'm gonna say he's eight six. The man himself was what eight nine eight ten. Eight eleven. Eight eleven. Eight, 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 eleven. Eight, almost nine. Almost nine. Tall. How, how how old was he when he died? Nine 30, and 36. Juice. Was he 36? He had to be very. Oh, wow. 32. Oh, sorry, 22, guys. 20. Oh, no, he was 22 two. years old when he died. Because they. Gigantism. Or yeah, they. What are, probably, what's the proper probably. term? Is that what they call it? They probably don't call it that anymore, right? Because that's offensive to I giants. Don't know. Cut that. <laughs> cut that. Cut that. Cut that. <laughs> don't cut it. I cut that. Fuck giants. <laughs> 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 they have it all. <laughs> we used to be able to openly slay giants. Wasn't that yeah. like early man would slay a giant? All right, well. You know, slaying giants is very frowned upon but now. I, I yeah. know, you can't slay you giants can't, anymore. Back in mythological days, that was the whole thing. You can slay anyone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, man. I, you got, well, I, but Roddy was the, was the best. So the crazy thing about Roddy is if he's going to go and wrestle someone who's seven feet tall, or Hogan, uh-huh. who's... Six six or something like that. Six seven. Yeah, Roddy was Roddy was what, not five eleven. Yes, and he six, was not. Maybe he had crossed over into mainstream entertainment just a little bit. You know, this is you know the Rock obviously did it best, but like Hogan kind of dabbled, but no one ever was like, eh, he's an actor. You know, Schwarzenegger was kind of taking the big guy roles. You know, for big muscly man, right. but Roddy like had a couple. Indie movies that became like cult classics. Mm-hmm. They live. Primarily, most, they live. They live. Yeah, most famously. Um, 
and he could act. Did you guys remember acting with him? Okay, so, yeah, so what I remember was when he start when he came in, he was like there was some like method acting shit happening. Like he was in character. Like he would, he would. I mean, he would interact with us, but like he was he kind of stayed in character. He kind of stayed in character to a degree. And I remember thinking at the time, and I think I brought this up to you guys, like. He was so good and playing it so real and so his performance was so haunted that it was like I, I was watching him thinking he could have played the wrestler. In, oh yeah, in, in the oh, wrestler, yeah. and Darren Aronofsky's the great. wrestler. He would he would have been amazing. He kind of I like, mean Mickey Rourke was incredible. He in kind of movie, would but. like say the lines. He kind of would say his own thing sometimes. Yeah. You remember? And it was a little. You had to kind of dance around communicating with him, although he was yeah. nice. But like he didn't like give off the like, "Hey, we're just going to chit chat and hang." I feel like when he came back the second, he time, did. Yeah, I mean, he he he. When we were off the stage in the dressing rooms, yeah. I spent a lot of time talking to him. He was a completely different person. Yeah, totally. Yeah, but uh, but Super, as soon as he but, got on set, he yes, was kind he of would, in the maniac. Yes, yes, he was the maniac. He was the maniac. He was the maniac. He had the most amazing stories. The, the most amazing. He story. well, he told me he survived a couple plane crashes. That okay. uh, they would like take these like little puddle jumper planes, so they could like do as many wrestling shows. You know, yeah. they would be like in Ontario, Canada, and then they'd be like, "We're just gonna pop over to some other little town, and we're gonna do a show really quick." And they would t and like occasionally the engines would drop out of these things. He said he like survived. <laughs> I think he told me at least three plane crashes. <laughs> he might have said five. But that he like walked away from them. He, like he had been stabbed by a fan, um, or a, I don't know if you would call somebody a fan who stabs you. But he was at. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, big fan. <laughs> Sorry to do this, just a, but huge fan, huge fan. Well, he would say they would go into these markets and and. Roddy always played the heel because that's what he was good at. So he was always the guy that everybody booed and like jeered and people would be whipped up into a frenzy and then they would truly believe that this guy yeah. was like a bad, bad guy, guy or evil. Yeah, he always played a bad guy. And so was some some maniac, <laughs> some crazy person at one of these events just took out a knife and just stabbed him a bunch of times yeah. as he was headed to the ring. What he, what he, how did he dispense with that guy? Did he, did he actually t like... Do you, did he get, get stabbed? Do you remember? Did he tell you this story? Yeah, he, yeah, he he got, and it's in it's in the book too. He he got stabbed, um, and then beat the shit out of the guy. And then from that point forward, he had a pistol. He had a pistol with him. He he would he had a jacket. He always wore a jacket. Oh, that, well, that's it's the same jacket he wore on the show. Yes, that was his jacket. That was his jacket. Yeah. And, he, and he showed me where he kept his pistol, which he kept. He still kept it. Yeah, in, in his, in and his that jacket, jacket, looked, jacket to. to Stop from the stabbings. To right? stop well, the stabbings the and to hold the and to hide the pistol and to hide the little yeah. his little derringer. Can I tell you about a personal journey that I've been on? Hmm. A yeah. journey with a new friend who's always with me, one who saved my life. Oh boy, where is this going? Yeah, mm -hmm. is this is this Mac talking or is this Rob talking? What, what I'm talking about is my journey with electrolytes. Ooh, okay, oh, okay, yeah, yeah all right. I'm happy Phew. to hear that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm talking about Element. And their electrolyte mix that's designed to replenish what your body sweats out, even if you aren't an athlete like myself. Oh, okay. So this is Mac talking. Element contains a science-backed ratio of 1,000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, and 60 milligrams magnesium with no sugar, no gluten, no coloring, and nothing artificial. Oh, okay. So it's made for everyone, but it's extra helpful for keto, low-carb, and paleo diets. That's correct. Now, can I tell you how Element showed me the error of my sinful ways and helped me turn it all around? Still sounding like Mac. Yeah. Okay. Just go ahead. Yeah, okay. Go no, ahead. this is Rob, because I would dehydrate myself with Manhattans, not not workout, oh. and eat chimichangas and donuts to cultivate mass. Now, I was no stranger to headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, and sleeplessness, but I looked within, and I asked for help, and also Googled my symptoms, and boom, mm -hmm. element to the rescue. Well, hey, look, if, it, if it's good enough for Olympic athletes, Navy SEALs, NBA, NFL, and NHL players, it's good enough for me. You have officially converted us. Right now, Element is offering our listeners a free sample pack with any purchase. That's eight single-serving packets free with any Element order. Now, this is a great way to try all eight flavors and share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash sunny. Now, this deal is only available through our link, okay? So you must go to D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-N. T.com slash sunny element LMNT offers no questions asked refunds. Try it totally risk free. If you don't like it, share it with a salty friend and they will give you your money back. No questions asked. You have nothing to lose, guys. 
Uh, guys, where do we stand on our uh, Taylor Swift tickets? Oh, we can't miss her. Okay, Adam. No, well, I was, I was I was in line for hours, and I, I got nothing. You cannot get tickets these days. No, look, buying tickets does not have to be stressful. Okay, it's not stressful at all if you use GameTime.co. Oh, right. Yes. No, GameTime. Of course. Yeah. No, that that's the app you use to find flash deals and last minute tickets. Event, uh, you know, for any kind of event in in, in your area. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be last minute. You know what I mean? Tay Tay is not here till August. But uh, I found us some some sick deals on on Pit. How, how good are we talking about like with these seats? Because I I need to be close enough where I can look into Taylor's eyes and see when she sings all too well that she's singing about Jake Gyllenhaal. What do you mean see if she's singing about Jake Gyllenhaal? I need she's to definitely know, singing. About I know, Jake. but I need to know if she's feeling mm-hmm. it or if she's just checked out. Okay, how about Got row it. two, buddy? Yeah, yeah, that'll do it, as long as I can afford them. Are they going to be reasonably? Well, let me tell priced? you something right now. With the game time guarantee, you will always get the best price. Now, if you find tickets in the same section uh, and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. But in my experience, no one else can uh, no one else can compete anyway. I might already have a thing that night. I, I got to run it by Jill. You know, luckily we can wait till the day of because Game Time is the place for last minute tickets. Nice. Yeah, yeah. We'll buy in two seconds and then the tickets come straight to your phone. No print, no email, no body, no crime. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app Create an account and use code SUNNY for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code SUNNY for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. My favorite thing in this episode is the happy accident. Do you guys know yes. what it was? The drive at away? the very end? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the end, Roddy had a whole sort of monologue about how much he loves us and he cares about us. And and the, whoever was driving the police car got the cue wrong. So the car just takes off. It was like take one, I think. He's starting to say his monologue. <laughs> he goes, no, wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait. He doesn't get to say his monologue. And it just wound up being- It was so funny. So funny. It's so much more real, right? It's like the cop doesn't wait for you to say your monologue and then drive off, right? So like- So is my memory wrong? Because my memory of that is actually that he didn't have a speech, but he, he had the to idea do to do a speech. I think that's actually more accurate. And I think he accurate. wanted to improvise yeah. a speech. Mm-hmm. And he told us, and so we knew he was going to do it. That's But cool. nobody told the driver. That, <laughs> so the, so Glenn, that is doing, absolutely is correct. That, yeah, that's okay. Yes. He, ha- he wanted it was to do a thing. Yeah. And we were, you know, we're like, yeah, go on. Let's yeah, give it a shot. Let's do it. Uh, and no one had told the driver. <laughs> so <laughs> he starts <laughs> doing the <laughs> thing. <laughs> that's so funny. And that is, of course, so much funnier. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, my boys. oh, my boys. Oh, my boys. My boys. He grows very close to us. He, th- he thinks of us as his, as his children. Now, you've talked about this on an earlier podcast, but I think it's worth mentioning again that you had this idea on the day that we were shooting the scene uh, where he pulls the razor wire out of his car, which was also not in the script. script. Mm. I think uh, we gave him a bunch of props, and then he he came up with the idea. I think of like it, of pulling the razor wire out. And it was his idea you to do it. like a wrestling bit. Like we yes. get you, yeah, we get you in the balls. That's like the crowd loves that. Oh know? yes, right, right, right. It was like bringing a wrestling bit. Yeah, yeah. By the way, I love how I love how real you play that, and I love you play it till the end of the scene. Like you just, it's net. It never doesn't hurt. I was but, thinking, like I was like watching. I was like, I should have played it a little bit in the next scene. But we might have shot the cricket scene before we decided to do the yeah, razor maybe, wire thing. Maybe you had the the uh, idea of when we ask him about his kids that he goes <laughs> and he drifts off, goes really dark, <laughs> and he goes really haunted, <laughs> and you don't know what happened to his kids, and that leaves us reeling like. Did this guy kill his kid? Did this? Uh-huh. Did he kill his kids? <laughs> what happened to his kids? Yeah. Guys like you, you, you know what? I love you guys, man. You know you, you remind me of my kids. Oh, you got kids, maniac? Nah, not anymore. What does that mean? Uh, okay, all right. We got a problem. I don't know, cool. what, what is he talking about with his kids? Did he, he just, kill his kids? Is he that just what happened? drifted away. He nails that delivery. He yeah. Just, you he, see his, you, he, so he goes he there. It's so real. He goes, he really goes there. Something sad has happened. He's lost, he's lost touch with his, his children. Now, did Roddy have children in real life? He does. He, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a son, I know for sure, and a, and a daughter. Uh, and I worked with his daughter. I directed a commercial with um, Ronda Rousey. 
and she was fighting somebody. It was it was Rod's daughter. Really? Yeah. How Who's she? in uh, W? She might be in the WWE. That's awesome. I miss Roddy. I really. He was a great, he's so great, yeah. great guy. He was a great guy. He was, and a great actor. I do love this trend of ours, though, of um, and I have tremendous respect for comedians and comedic actors, but I do love that we have this trend of like wanting to get dramatic performers on our show. You know, like, oh, yeah, I, yeah. like it was always funny, funnier to us. I mean, even initially when we were, you know, going over uh, people that could possibly play, you know, Dennis and Dee's dad, that we were talking about Ray Liotta, uh-huh. that we were talking about. Um, Ray Liotta was number one. Ray Liotta was. That was, the, that was our, our number one. But that was before Danny came. Yeah, before yes. Danny had when been When we were suggested. just knocking around the ideas. Yeah. We were like, wow, Ray Liotta would be amazing. Imagine Ray Liotta as. Frank Reynolds. He would have been incredible. It's a completely different it's character. It's a totally different character, a totally different show. Uh, I My character probably wouldn't ever have gotten as angry because Ray Liotta would have taken that role. Yeah. <laughs> the show Ray would have been great, completely but different. Like he, he, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't he, no Danny, yeah. Only well, Danny can do what, you know. And only Ray can do what Ray does. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, and that's 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 the thing. But but I liked, I, I, I've, I've always kind of gravitated towards that. I really enjoy watching dramatic mm-hmm. actors give dramatic performances in a comedy where the situation and the character and the want is so crazy that that's what makes it funny. And the performance itself is very grounded and real. I love that. Well, speaking of drama, the wonderful dramatic scene of deciding what our team name is going to be <laughs> and what, what they're, what, what, how we describe what they are and us basically just describing birds to you. When, when I was watching this episode uh, yesterday, I wanted to watch those outtakes because I remember them being very funny. And, there were some notable missing things. And I don't know why I remember this, but I remember we went on a lot of different riffs about a lot of different ref- wrestlers. You did a whole bit about Coco Beware. You did a whole bit about uh, <laughs> the, the junkyard, junkyard dog. Dog, dog, dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember you doing a bunch of riffing on on a bunch of different wrestlers, wrestlers and I remember just crying laughing mm. at all, all that. I was big into wrestling, so I... Yeah, so was I. Well, I, and in that particular era, I was as well. So all the that's why it was so funny to me because I knew all the wrestlers that you were re- referencing, but had... Like it yeah, you dr- kind of forget about forgotten them. about it. We would do like yeah. these neighborhood Royal Rumbles in my buddy's basement where we would like move the chairs and... Oh, yeah. Into yeah. like a ring. Oh, yeah. And then the last man standing in the middle wins. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so the move usually was like gang up on the biggest kid first. Like everyone go after the biggest kid, get him out of the ring. Right, smart. And then we can. That's what they. That's what they would do in the Royal Rumble. Yeah, they would so, go after Andre first. Like go after, it. yeah, slowly but surely, you just yeah, whittle we them learn down. from the best. You never know who's going to wind up. <laughs> you never know winning the Royal Rumble. Yeah, you leave yeah. that giant in the ring. Anything can happen. You know, so slay the giant first. Again. I, you know, he Chinese used to be acceptable. silken hair. Who came up with that? Rob Rosell. <laughs> Rob Rosell, right? That feels like, skin a, Rob like a hot dog. Skin like, skin a, like a hot dog. dog. <laughs> now, yeah. Roddy had Gone. a great head of hair. Yeah, sure. He did, all the way till the end there. Yeah. yeah. How old was he when he passed? 60s, probably? Oh, too young. Early too young. Maybe, yeah, maybe 60. Yeah, maybe 60, but I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, hard was living. That. Hard living. Yeah, his book, that, the book is worth checking out. In the pit with Piper. I do remember just being absolutely blown away at the stories that he was telling. And it's and it is literally it, just a collection of stories. Like it's, it, it, he's it's, all over the place. Yeah, it's, yes. There's no narrative. It's like, like being I, in his head. He just jumps all over the place. Yeah. But the stories, the <laughs> anecdotes, if you will, are sure. or, or antidotes. Or the antidotes. If, they, if you find on, it to be the cure yeah. to what ails you, uh, are really fun. The antidotes to boredom. Yes, it's the antidote to boredom. The scene where we meet Ben. <laughs> And he comes off that bus. Kate, first of all, Caitlin is great in that scene as yeah. Desert Rose. And she looks so damn funny. The costume work in this episode yeah. is amazing. So on the nose, everything she's doing. She look, she dressed like a rose. She brought a rose. She's going to sing Desert Rose. Yeah. She's going to sing she's Kiss, from, Kiss from, from a Rose, rose by Seal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she runs off. And Danny. Dan, uh, okay. Now, this is the difference between, say, One of the Ray Liotta yeah, or yeah, a dramatic yeah. actor versus a comedic actor where Danny doesn't say anything as he's, as he's playing the song. And he's just looking. Or even as, she, as she's he, trying well, to he, bail he, he on goes, meeting yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> he, like, does, like, a noise. He's like, <laughs> and then he pushes the button. And then he's like, yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. looking at him like, huh? That scene, right? too. Like, and then he presents <laughs> him jean shorts and he kind of drapes them and he, like, salutes them. Just and it's the kind of thing that... Is what I feel like 
would be so misunderstood by anyone who wasn't a Sonny fan or hadn't. Like, if you just watch that scene for the first time, you'd be like, well, this isn't funny. These guys are going for something and it's just not working. Mm -hmm. But when you know the show and you know the tone and you've lived with it for years, it is the funniest. I love it. I love it so much. At least to me, I don't care what anyone else thinks. Yes, it's incredible. Yeah. On paper, you're like, that's the kind of thing that people are like, why Why is this? <laughs> like, if you showed someone that scene for the first time, you're like, so this is the show. They'd be like, huh? Jean shorts and saluting a man? Well, okay, so let's stop down for a second. Because I get asked this question quite a bit, and I, I don't know what the answer is. And maybe we can figure it out on this podcast. There are definitely episodes. When, so when someone says, I've never seen your show, uh, but I, but I want to start. Mm-hmm. Because I hear, I've heard enough about it. Where should I start? I never, I just tell them not to watch it because they're probably not going to get it. But but what's the episode to where you where you begin? And I definitely know the episodes where you shouldn't begin. Like this, the pilot. <laughs> don't, don't start with the first one. Well, I, I was watching it yesterday and Caitlin, uh, I paused it for a second to come into the kitchen and I was laughing and she's like, I can hear you laughing in the other room. What are you laughing about? And I was laughing at how the show is so specific. It's so specific. And this episode is so specific. And I can see why if you if you like it, you would love it because it, it's very niche and specific. And if you don't like it, I can also understand why you wouldn't like it. And this episode in particular, it feels like, to your point, Charlie, you have to know the show so well to yeah. get so much of it, mm-hmm. I think. But I think I am I am always of the mindset that you just have to make that. Like, you, you, you have a vision for a thing and a voice and you just fucking stick to it. And they'll either come around to it or they won't. They may never, or they it may come late. Like a lot of people just didn't get or understand our show. And they all now kind of are like, well, yeah, that show's great. Maybe around the time that we were doing that scene, the people who were already in loved it. The people who didn't know would be like, I don't know what the fuck this show is. Yeah, like, I don't these know guys are doing like dressing this. like birds and handing someone jean shorts. Why is this funny? Um, but then like over time, the people who are going to come around to it really appreciate the fact that you get so specific, right? Mm-hmm. And then the people who are never going to get it are just never going to get it. But if we were like, eh, we can't really do this scene. We got to do something that reaches a wider audience. It would kill the show. I don't know. That's what art is, right? You just got to fucking... But it's great when you can do both, right? It's amazing if you can... Yeah, you if can you can pull both. off both. Yeah, yeah that's, the, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the sweet spot. Yeah, but sometimes you can't. Sometimes you got to hand someone jean shorts and salute them. And, <laughs> and just see what happens. And that's it. And talk about desert roses and desert grapes. The casting of Travis. I mean, Travis, every once in a while we'll write something and then you, you go through the audition process and you see people come in. And every once in a while someone will just come in and nail it. And you're yeah. like, yep, that's the one. And you can't imagine anyone else being yeah. the character. You're like, well, that's the guy. It feels so good to finally hold you. Uh, uh, you're, you're, you're riding my lip. Hi! Oh, oh, oh. what a coincidence. Uh, hey, uh, oh, you're the girl from the bus stop. Yes, I am. Well, you, you guys are friends, right? Mm-hmm. Not really. <laughs> well, tell your friend thanks for the shorts. They fit great. Yeah, <laughs> will do. So, what's, what's the deal with you standing? I thought there was a, a wheelchair and you were in it. Oh, no, <laughs> no, I... I twisted my knee getting off a plane in Germany. Uh, I'm, I was just trying to stay off of it. It's good now. See? <laughs> oh, yes, it is. It's so great because he's he's nothing like that in no. real life. He's nothing like that in real no. life. But he knows exactly what's funny about yeah. him. Yeah. You know, to come in. He's he's handsome and he kind of has that just that qu- that quality that he can turn off and on where he's just sort of sweet and dim witted. Mm-hmm. And he's very sweet in real life, but he's certainly not dim witted. No. It, he just knows exactly what's funny about him. Yeah, 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 that's why we've gone back to the well with him so many times. Yeah, the Travis well. Where did the jean shorts thing come from? Well, it's interesting because we talked about it in the uh, the Extreme Makeover episode about I was wearing longer jean shorts and you had the cutoffs and you could do the great leg mm-hmm. spread. Right, so we already had so established we'd already done a, bit. a jean short bit. But Roselle just has an obsession with jean shorts. I think right. that was, he was Yeah, that sounds saying. right. So... Yeah. And then we got we you know we hit it again with Chad later where he was like you got to take <laughs> gotta jean take shorts off because you're gonna blow. Well, once we the established crotch. once we established Ben the soldier wearing those jean shorts in this episode and being like they fit great, 
that was it for him. He, <laughs> that, that was his. I think we've only ever seen his character. Well, no, we've, he's, we've probably seen him in something else since then, but mostly he's been if, in Gene Shorts. Yeah. If he was in something <laughs> else, it was it was for a very specific reason. But yeah, he just kind of continued to wear those Gene Shorts and and uh, and our character Z had to, you know, had to let him know that you do have to take them off every now and then. It's a funny like <laughs> plot too. Do you think we would think of that plot today to be like, we're going to... To a wrestling match. To oh, like it, it the was troops. so labored, and I remember it being labored in the in the writers' room. Yeah, we knew we wanted to do something with wrestling. How do we get into yeah. it? How can we justify it? It's clunky as hell. No, but we it don't just does really not matter no, at justify. all. I mean, yeah, we don't, we don't really justify no, the motivation. It. Just, is there's just something sad. about maybe us being younger too, where you still just kind of buy these guys want to put on like a wrestling match, like yeah, and it feels like maybe the characters are too old for that shit now. I don't know. In some ways. I hope not. Well, I mean, you got- you Well, got Danny Rod wants to do it. You got Roddy telling- Yeah. You got Roddy telling telling us, you know, he's like, you know, you kids. Uh, he's calling us kids and stuff. And yeah, like yeah. back then, that didn't even, like, didn't even fully occur to me that even then we weren't kids. Because in my <laughs> mind, I still was a kid, even though I was in my 30s. Yeah. You know? <laughs> the characters certainly were. Well, maybe it works because Charlie says, we, we'll do this to celebrate America. We'll do it to celebrate yeah. the troops. Mm -hmm maybe celebrate ourselves a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that's when we really get on board. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, when we're yeah, like, yeah. That's, that's a lot of good things, but especially the celebrating us. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. That's right, Charlie. BetterHelp is an online therapy service that dares ask the question, how much time are you spending on other people in a given week versus how much time you're spending on yourself. That's right. It's very easy to get caught up with what everybody needs from you, and you never take a moment to really reel it in and just be selfish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're a good kind of selfish, right? <laughs> Self-preserving. Because otherwise, we spend all our time giving, and we end up feeling depleted and, 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 and burned out. But therapy can give you the tools, you know, to strike that sweet, sweet balance in your life, you know? So you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. No hesitation. No surrender. No, no man, man left, left behind. behind. That's right. And uh, now we know Meg has tried better help in the past, and she always talks about how beneficial it was to her. Mm -hmm. Where is Meg today? Uh, well, maybe she had a better help appointment. She might have. Oh, okay. Well, hey, good for you, Meg. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. Prioritizing yourself and your health over others' demands. Mm -hmm. We love a good boundary. Better help is entirely online, and it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just Fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. That's all you got to do. And you can switch up your therapist anytime for free. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, don't overthink it. Just do it at betterhelp.com. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash sunny today and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash sunny. All right, all right, okay. At the time of this recording, we are days away from the start of the NBA Finals. And by the time this airs, we'll be two games in. Both teams will be tied 1-1, or someone will be up 2-0. That's oh just statistically gosh. true. That has to be one or the other. And who is that going to be? Well, mm. who's to say, man, you know? But we should probably figure that out because the books are open, baby. No, I mean literally, like who's playing? Oh, I don't who's know. Playing? Oh, oh, I have no two clue. Two basketball teams, the Denver yeah. Nuggets yeah, and yeah, the Miami yeah, Heat. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And yes. your money is on? Well, that's up to you, Glenn, whichever oh. team you believe in. But you should place your bets on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Now, new customers can place a $5 bet and score 200 bucks in bonus bets instantly. Plus, all customers can take a shot at even bigger payouts with DraftKings stepped up same game parlays. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code ALWAYS. So just get onto DraftKings Sportsbook and flip a coin. Uh, think about how much you can win. Uh, if you have a gambling problem, mm -hmm. call 1 800 Gambler. In Massachusetts, call 1 800 327 5050 or visit gambling helpline ma.org. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. Now, if you're in Kansas, you're going to want to call 1-800-522-4700. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, Kansas, 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com sportsbook 
For details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Opt in at 10 plus leg rec for 100% boost. Eligibility wagering and deposit restrictions apply. Terms at sportsbook.com, draftkings.com slash basketball terms. Here's a question for Megan. Besides missing a tooth, Cricket looks okay at the start of this episode. It ends up with his first major injury that starts his physical decline. Do you already did we already have that journey in mind for him? Is that right? Um, I think no, we didn't have any sort of a journey in mind for him, but uh um, He already bashed his legs up good. Uh in yes, uh he'd gotten his legs uh, bashed up by the uh, gangsters. But yes, he is he is relatively uh, clean cut when we uh, go see him at the men's shelter. Mm-hmm. Um, some great outtakes from that scene as well. Um, He's pretty great we can, as we can the throw up. Bomb. Let's throw up those, up, up those uh, outtakes now. How do you find me? Well, How do you always find me? You know, we check all the, the suck places and the, the bath suck joints houses. and yeah. bathhouses in the area. And we found you at this suck yeah. joint. Yeah. This, this is not, no, this is not a suck joint. This is an adult men's rehabilitation center. An adult center. That's the point we're trying <laughs> yeah, to make. Yeah, <laughs> we can read between the lines. His sand move. Yeah, he had a, he had a specific great. idea yeah, in mind lo- for, of what the sand was going to be. Yeah, I liked it too. Yeah. I, liked, I, liked his, uh, I liked his style what on that. What were we doing with this sand? Were we, what was he blowing into our... face? I don't know because he really was blowing something. Something, right? Yeah, so I don't, and, and, and. It looked like we were really getting hit with it, for mm-hmm. for sure. So yeah, I don't know what we would have been okay with. It was definitely around the time where it would have been something that that Glenn would have been like, wait, wait, can we talk about what this is? Mm-hmm. And you and I would be like, shut up, just do fuck, it, just do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it, it might have been like asbestos. <laughs> now it wouldn't have been, mm-hmm. but if it was 1975, Charlie and I would have been the same people, and you would have been like, well, can we talk about what it is we're breathing in? And Charlie would be like. We we'd be like, dude, stop being a pussy. Just fucking do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then meanwhile, you're getting you'd visit cancer. us in our hospital rooms. So. Yeah, I did see. Remember? How about so. Danny as the trash man? What's your memory of this? Do you remember? He seemed to he enjoy it. Yeah, I feel like he liked being in that onesie. And- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, he he kills it in this episode, top to bottom. I mean, when, when he when he's you know when he first comes out as a trash man. First of all, I love the old school. Yeah, the, the, the single was it George the George, George the Animal, animal Steel. 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 Now there's yes. a great look, and the character was kind of in that zone where George was not really supposed to be. He was part animal. Yeah, wasn't his thing chewing he, on your head? He like, would no, he would his? eat the turnbuckle. Oh, that's it. He would the chew the turnbuckle yeah, because the turnbuckle. he was he was a beast. Yeah, he was a beast. That's he was an animal. animal. <laughs> he was an animal. <laughs> I don't know what they were selling. What they were selling there was he, he was like raised in the uh, in the jungle. I don't know, but he would eat. The it was a barbarian bottle. type situation, right? Uh-huh. He was raised in a basement, which I've since the last time we spoke, I've you seen saw barbarian and, and enjoyed. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, maybe he was like they finally let him out from the basement of the of right, the, of the and place. he didn't know not to chew the term. No, because he was raised by. Yeah, he, everything was food as far as he was concerned. If I can get <laughs> yeah. it in my mouth, it's food. Yeah, turnbuckles especially. <laughs> sure, they're Look soft. Like they're and packed full chewy. of and, and according to the, the the stories that you might find in in the pit with Piper, there there is some truth to some of the characters. Like people didn't want right, to hang out right. with George Animal Steel because he was really like deranged. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, yeah. now he might yeah. not be eating turnbuckles in, in, in yeah. his off time, but it was like, hey, guys, keep that guy away. From <laughs> keep him at a distance. Now, before Vince McMahon sort of turned it into a mega business or whatever, was there another guy who, who was like his saying, father? His father ran, Ed and, and it was like it was like. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, there was, You're correct, it, was sir. <laughs> it was super regional. They had like the, the Southern belt and then they had the Canadian, yes. like Roddy's Canadian. Yeah. Yes. So a lot of it was it. like North America. And then there was a, wasn't there a WCW? Am I making that up? Yeah. And then they just started consolidating them Which all. probably yeah. had as much to do with how television worked at the time, right? Yeah. It's like you Vince, have Vince is the one stations. that like consolidated everything. But mm-hmm. like Ric Flair was in a completely different organization, mm-hmm. and then <laughs> <laughs> it was it was like a more regional. A lot of Ric Flair stories in in Roddy's book. Yeah, uh, a lot of Jake the Snake stories yes. in Roddy's book. Jake the Snake, who became a governor, right? No, 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 that, no. That's no, Jesse that, the Body. That, that was, Jesse was the not body. also Jake the Snake. No, no, different, no, no, different, different guys. guy. Similar look. Similar look. Very right? similar look. Yes. Although Jake Jake the Snake didn't have the body. 
So Jesse Ventura had a, like a ripped he body. Had the body. Jake never he had, just a had a body. A snake. <laughs> no, he just had a snake. <laughs> he was big and he had a snake. He, and he, a snake. And he, he was did, tall. He had long hair, did he not? Yes. Jake the snake? He had a mullet. Yeah. Mullet yeah, and a yeah. mustache. Yeah. And yeah. not a great body, but huge. Oh, probably like 6'5 wow. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, he, and, and a maniac of a person also in real life. And he what? what and he would carry that snake around. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then he would knock you out and then he would take the boa constrictor and just put it on your body. And for some reason, that would cause you to foam at the mouth. There was no science uh, to support yeah, any of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. The fact that they would torture this poor snake and bring it into the wrestling match. Like, snake is like, when do I get to eat one of these guys? Yeah. Yeah. Am I ever going to actually get to finish off one of these guys? Yeah. It was a, what was the name of the snake? Clementine or something like that? Oh, it, the Jesus. snake had a name. The snake wow. had a name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Well, sure. Yeah. Like that, sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't so know. wait, then Ric Flair was a guy. Which he was, was, he oh, was no. a hero. He was like, he, he was okay. like a, yeah. Who was like the hype man guy with like the mega? That was Jimmy Hart. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Hart. Hart. Okay. Jimmy Hart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Bobby the Brain Heenan, he was also a hype Bobby man. Bobby the Brain <laughs> Heenan. And then there were like the no-name guys that like would come in and yeah. wrestle. Like, you'd be like, sure. and then this week he, you're wrestling. Yeah. Nah, but it names? was, it's like, cool to kind of track how some, some guys would start as no-name people and then they would transition. They would, they would rebrand. Yeah. Like Macho Man started off off, I believe, is leaping, leaping Lenny Poffo. And then he had like a completely well, different. Well, leaping Lenny Poffo was also a pretty good name. And then he, and then he just transitioned into a different character. I believe. I remember or Jimmy, Jimmy Superfly Snooker. Oh, Jimmy! So <laughs> Jimmy Superfly Snooker got got almost killed by Roddy. Ro Ro is that Rod the coconuts? Rod thing? hit him over the head with a coconut yeah, and yeah, like yeah, cracked yeah. his fucking head open. Yeah, on TV, uh, on Shit. television, on and television. almost killed him. <laughs> Almost killed him. Yeah, it gave him such a bad concussion. Yeah, that smashed him. So I thought, uh, you know, you boys, these coconuts. Uh, I thought your head was coconut like, and it could take it. You know, coconut on coconut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, my head is not made of coconut, Roddy. And, and bash two and coconuts friends. together. One of them's gonna break. Yeah, and you don't know which breaks. one. So that's the. I think that's the rub when people say it's fake. Like it's not. It's not fake. It's just that when you hit somebody with it over the head with a coconut and you don't pull the punch a little bit, it's gonna knock his. It's gonna knock him unconscious. Yeah, it's, Roddy no, it's gives not fake. Don I mean, Fry like a rib kick that seems pretty real in the in the. I'm sure we add a little sound effect, but boy, it seems like the foot hits the ribs. I mean, these hard. guys were so hopped up on painkillers because they were getting hurt. Yeah, like mm -hmm. left and right, drinking like an Advil smoothie in the morning. Just yeah, like just sixty five <laughs> Advils. Yeah, just a, a Vicodin and a bottle of vodka. You know, a pint of vodka <laughs> and just yeah, that's what's up. The song, the the Birds of War. Um, I, we must have put that beat in in post. The boom, -tsh. we did, boom and, and yeah, we did. Never we, matched up. It's a because we a didn't little. have the we didn't have the fucking earwigs. Yeah. We needed that. You needed to have. You got to have the earwigs to to stay on beat. Otherwise, you're gonna speed up or slow mm -hmm. down. You know, and it's a bummer. We could have just had somebody go in and post and literally like slow down and speed up with us. Yeah, you know, but uh, you know, this was season five, so I guess we weren't, we weren't doing that. Yet. The, I mean, you know. Yeah. Edited by Tim Roach. I recognize his, his voice, voice as the, yeah. uh, as oh, the yeah. announcer of yeah. the wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big picture, though, I love this. I love this season. Yeah. I love this season. It just uh, was a great time of our lives. I do think <laughs> that we had really hit our stride in this season. Yeah. I remember thinking it at the time. Um, it still feels to me like two, three, and four, we were still mm -hmm. tweaking it and finding it. There's some great, great, great episodes in those seasons. But like season five feels like where we really found it. The 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 scene of delivering him the shorts feels like the kind of thing you can only do when you feel as though you've found your voice, right? And you're like, we know what our voice is. We feel confident to just sit with Danny and the song and that this is entertaining enough for the for who we're trying to entertain. The painted abs, last thing. Mm. When did that, was that in the script or did we? No, I remember asking Leah Votro to do that uh -huh. and just yeah. do it. And then that was one of those where you were like, I don't know if we should do this. And I was like, Leah, Leah just, just, just paint it on, just paint it on. And you were like, I don't know, we should talk about it. And I was like, just, just, just stop, just stop. And then nine times out of 10, you do that, I do that. And, and then I get to the end of it and I'm like, eh, all right, just erase it. But I did it. And then you looked at it and you're like, okay, I'll do that. Too. Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. It's so that. funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good yeah. bit. Even the, just the, <clears throat> the costumes, just the hat, the feathers on the shoulders. That's, you know, that like, we'll, we'll describe it a little bit, but then the costume department has to go and make it. And like between Desert Rose 
and that bird costume mm-hmm. and and the trash man, trash man and the talibum and talibum, yeah. they just really knocked it out of the park. Totally. This episode. Yeah, but I I, I I regret that we were offbeat on that song because I, I feel like the song, song. I feel like the song would actually be more iconic if if it had been more. If we nailed it, yeah. yeah. This is how well I know you guys. Uh, it, it did not bother me, but I was bothered for you. And as we were watching it, I was like, definitely these guys are watching this and it's going to, it's going to bug the shit. It didn't bug me me. because I knew ahead of time Mm because I remembered the trauma of being like, we didn't nail the rhythm of the thing. But, uh, well, I think we nailed the rhythm of the podcast. I I did too. I did too. Drop a beat for us. You ready? So, 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 so,